Best versus NRG next, but I wanted to do a playoff hit just uh, to talk about the ramifications of the last match and the next match. So first things first, yeah, C9 lost. And so they did. What, what are the ramifications of it? Of course, there was a chance for them to lock in top one if they had won. Uh, sadly, with M IMT winning, that hold, is... Hold on one second, Raz. We okay. need to get it on screen. Currently, I see Wide Whippo. That is Wide Whippo. I see a lot of Wide Whippo. He Maybe he's covering first, the screen. Obviously. Maybe he's yeah. covering the screen. Okay, there it is. So just to catch up on that one, yes. Uh, now with IMT winning, they cannot lock it in, but they can at least play a tiebreaker, and I'm sure it's one of those cursed tiebreaker situations that would occur. Yeah. Now looking into the next match, what's going to be interesting to me is, of course, for NRG. Let's just highlight them. If NRG were to win, they can secure, not locked, but at least a tiebreaker for top six. So that's going to be the ramification for them, so they can breathe a, like a sigh of relief if they were to take this one. For FlyQuest, on the other hand, if they win that, just taking a look at top four, they can, uh, where they are? I think they oh. hard lock it. They hard lock it. So that's a thing, right, immediately. They can hard lock top four with the win, no concerns whatsoever for the rest of the weekend uh, about playoff spots. So that's the ramifications, simply put, for you guys into the next matchup. Yeah, I think for me, big chance of FlyQuest being top one is going to be interesting for me. A win puts them to 87.5% of the remaining scenarios. So that'll be really interesting, but we are into the draft for game two. Let's go. Yep. And already we see some target bans coming out of NRG. Bwipo's Olaf and Jensen's Oriana off the table, and then FlyQuest eliminating Jace Vi and the Wukong. Jace kind of really rising in priority on this patch. Yeah, so immediately we should just talk about the shared champion pool between both of these mid laners because, yes, Palafox has gone through quite a few mids. Uh, to me, Jensen is the focus because after he's lost the Azir due to the bug, Oriana has been banned. He's actually the third pick that he's gone to, especially yesterday, is the Karma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder what energy is going to be doing to just nail down Jensen's champion pool to make it as uncomfortable as possible. For what it's worth, I think before the Azir disabled due to the bug, teams didn't really seem willing to devote two bands to Jensen. Yeah. But it's very easy to devote one. Yes. And I think that actually makes FlyQuest a good bit weaker just because Jensen is so damn stable when he's on Oriana Azir. I thought the Karma was a big step down in terms of control mage power in that game they played yesterday. Yeah, yeah. and I do think that uh, Jensen is more flexible, but the amount of draft resources they have to send his way has just been phenomenal. <laughs> like They don't have to do anything basically for him if they can secure those picks. So, Kalista first pick actually for FlyQuest is an interesting one for me because all these eight bot lanes are available. They can go towards Senna. They don't believe in that. They can go towards the Smolder. That's also left to the wayside. Yeah, the most interesting thing really is that both Senna and Smolder are up for NRG. In particular, the Senna, despite the fact that we did see uh, Senna losing yesterday in the Shopify game, um, I do think this is still an incredibly strong pick for NRG. And just in incredibly st strong pick overall. You can do so many things in draft with the Senna, and it's going to be the Senna Nautilus, it looks like, coming out for FBI and Huhi in the bot lane. It almost makes me think that it's some sort of trap that FlyQuest is laying, but yeah. like, those are just the two best bot lane picks, I feel <laughs> like, so they need to have something incredibly practiced cooked up with Masu Busio because I think giving Senna Nautilus, especially to energy, a team that is so used to playing Senna and having FBI ward around the map uh, is very dangerous. But Callista Renata is going to be the choice. Yeah. And I mean, just even from like the LEC fans that are coming in, they have now been completely burned down on Smolder. They don't like Smolder. They think obviously everyone and neither is, do we, Raz. We hate Smolder too. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels like that's the trick is that FlyQuest is really trying to zero in on bot lane. And the last time we saw Senna Nautilus uh, from NRG, it was quite a terror. Yeah. I think that was versus Team Liquid, where there really wasn't much damage profile to deal with Nautilus later on in the game. I do think Smolder going completely through draft is a little perplexing, but I understand it because of the Callista and the Senna. Yeah. Another thing I want to point out is, from your episode of Pros Raz, Inspired was throwing some pretty large disrespect towards energy. He was talking about EG's old team and how obviously some things fell apart in the summer split, but he is essentially saying that there's no way if we stayed together would these players, he said, yep. be able to beat us on energy. So it was, uh, I, I wonder if energy saw that and are using it as some bulletin board material. The fraud allegations are being thrown a lot yeah. <laughs> to a lot of our teams. Legit, I am never losing to those players. <laughs> oh. That's great. 
Yeah. That's fun. So that's, that's added fuel. I feel like anytime NRG feel a little bit disrespected, it fuels them to play a little better. Uh, that being said, I wonder what the condition is for Dokla, because remember, the, the game they had yesterday, he was definitely feeling under the weather. I actually saw him in the hallway. He said he is tired, but a lot better than yesterday. Thank God. That's good. All right. He looks a little better. Yeah. Throw nice. A lot of love to Dokla, who, of course, was going through, I guess, a pretty big illness uh, just yesterday. He had his he had his Jordan flu game. <laughs> what do you have? Yeah. He almost brought back for them, honestly. True. And one of those uh, later game team fights in the Shopify game. As we see, Volibear has been kind of a terror in LCS specifically. Uh, and then Sejuani removed by NRG against Inspired. Yeah, jungle pick is going to be really interesting, um, especially with Poppy being pretty high priority for me if you're going up against Kalista mm -hmm. and with how good Contracts is and how much priority he puts on Poppy, I expect that to be the four pick. So I want to see if FlyQuest thinks that it's important enough to ban. Yeah, I think jungle being pushed to four five, as you mentioned, is really going to test these champion pools a little bit. Mm -hmm. There could be a Viego angle still in there for Inspired. I know that's one of his favorite champions, but you're mentioning Poppy, which could work for energy. They do need to make sure they sneak in a little bit of damage just because yeah. Senna Nautilus isn't massively powerful, but having a strong melee to play through in the top lane when Senna decides to inevitably roam up, roam up is very interesting. The yeah, Darius ban is actually daring an Udyr pick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, saying Dokla doesn't play it and that Whippo is going to play it. I actually really like saving that for that specific ban slot. And also, if, if he does go up for an Udyr on four pick, FlyQuest have still a, quite a few champions that they're willing to play into it. Like the Mordekaiser is one that we saw really early on in the split. So now it's going to be a challenge on what Whippo not, not has to play because he has a lot of picks versus Udyr. What he wants to play versus the Udyr in this comp. Yeah, as we see the Udyr hover. Uh, oh, there it is. It's going to be contract as pick, uh, presumably on the Lee Sin coming through, which I think is smart. Uh, again, we have talked so much about how FlyQuest really do like to save that uh, red side counter pick for Bwipo, you kind of don't want to give him that for free, yeah. uh, even as strong as Udyr is uh, as, as a blind pick. Bwipo's laughing about it though, I don't know. He's, uh... he's like, do we actually want to take it? I know we were trying to bait them into it, but do I really want to play it this game? The funniest uh, thing is, I think both of these top laners when it comes to counter picks, he doesn't really want to play it. He there it is, it goes through an Acton. But like, counter pick's pretty deep. It's just as more like whether or not you actually respect the, the range tops that Dokla plays in mm -hmm. solo queue. So if you go off of yeah. actual, uh, the data that they've been pulling, I'm sure, going into this game, it's like, yeah, Dokla can play. He played Vayne on stage. It's whether or not you feel like they can play around it as a team successfully, because even in that Vayne game, he was really far behind. It was tough, and it came down to kind of a contract Baron steal to really turn that game around. Yeah. Uh, as we see the Poppy coming out on FlyQuest side, potentially now. Makes sense with the, the dash that you have on both Ari and Lee Sin. So now it's going to be the counter pick top laner for Dokla. And that's going to be interesting to me. If you go to five pick, especially versus uh, Blippo, you're going to have to have a challenging top laner. That being said, Jat is heading over to the casting desk because he will be casting uh, that game for them, for us. So yeah. what, what do you feel about the draft? That's going to be a rumble locked in for NRG. Yeah, the rumble is interesting. I want to see if he is able to get push on the top side because Renekton, as we've seen, is just super, super strong, especially mm -hmm. if he's able to get that early eclipse with yeah. the new build. Um, but I mean, this is a comp that theoretically NRG should be really comfortable playing around. I think it's going to come down to where's contracts and where's inspired. The last time uh, these two teams met, it was kind of a little bot lane fiesta down there with yeah. both junglers constantly trying to get their lanes ahead and a lot of trading. Um, so we'll see. I mean, FlyQuest have kind of said right really early on in their draft, we want to slam on the bot side with Callista Renata. That's true. It's a very volatile bot side. Eyes are going to be on Callista Renata to see if it works out. Same with top lane. Eyes on the jungle. I want to hear what the casters have to say about this one. Take it away, guys. Welcome back to the caster desk and welcome to a slugfest between FlyQuest and NRG. I'm Azel. I'm joined by Jat and Azale in a tri-cast. I'm just saying Whoa. I get to knock off two of my goat casters, goading <laughs> uh, bucket list here, getting to cast with you guys. But it's going to be a lot of fun because of the implications of this one. NRG, the champions of uh, summer. FlyQuest, 
feeling like the champions of spring here this year. Yeah, they've been doing really well in the regular season, definitely making a case for themselves you know, as the best team heading into playoffs. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. Obviously, the Rumble people won't be surprised as having been a first pick for Dokula split. But we also have a couple other first picks that may surprise you. First time Lee Sin actually for contracts this split, and also first Renekton for Bwipo this split. So some of the most meta champs, but they actually haven't been playing them. Contracts in particular has been playing so much different stuff. His most played champions, he only has two plays on, and there's only two of them. So contracts, we are almost at the end of the split, and is basically just not repeating champions throughout almost the entire time. Now we're getting into game number two of the day, so let's go ahead and get loud as the LCS continues. It is going to be NRG versus FlyQuest. It's going to be a lot of fun here. And hitting again one time on the playoff implications here. The Cloud9 loss actually means a FlyQuest win guarantees Cloud9 won't be first place. Mm -hmm. So the super team getting first place that everyone predicted before the split could end here in this game. This is a replay of what happened as we were loading into the game. Palafox checking nice. that push, Oof. has to burn his flash early. On the side of energy, a win will lock them into at least a tiebreaker for top six. So nothing crazy is gonna happen this game, but it will definitely greatly increase FlyQuest chances for first with the win, and energy really wants to secure a top four, which is gonna require a lot of wins for the rest of the weekend. And the funny thing is, you know, INT just uh, won over Cloud9, and they had one in the first round robin. NRG also won over FlyQuest in the first round robin. So we'll see if the continuation of fate is there, as Masu and Busio taking a pretty hefty trade in the bot lane. So Thinkar put out this tweet as we have some uh, scrappy level one. He wants to know who would win a, in a fight <laughs> off the rift mm. between these two teams. That's a tough one. We chat, we want to, who's going to win? Is it FlyQuest or Energy? Have you seen the guns on Dokla, though? Like, I, I don't know. He's also a pretty big, big guy, big though. Big guy. And Dokla was sick yesterday. And Spire is also kind of jacked. He is. It's like subtly jacked. He's like the fit jacked. I feel like it might be FlyQuest. I don't know. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get a, a <laughs> consensus of the community and see who they think would win at an actual fist fight. Uh, but we're getting a little fist fighting on bot side. I really like this focus from Masu and Busio. Something they have been focusing on is 2v2s and finding a lot more consistency in that fact. And playing up like this with the Renata Callista is good to start. I mean, this start is really, really good for FlyQuest. Obviously, they get the flash off of Foul Fox. They invade with the Poppy Talia, push contracts off that side of the map. Now they can kind of create this split map situation. You have Doklu who's playing Ignite Rumble. He wants to play aggressive. Mm -hmm. If your jungler is pushed out of the top quadrant, you don't get to play aggressive. You have to sit under your tower. You can't actually abuse this matchup in the way that you want to, which is going to make it really, really difficult. And there's also an angle for a flash gank here on Foul Fox, potentially. We'll see. Get a little bit of uh, movement there, at least knowing that he doesn't have the flash. Palaflox was staying far enough away from the wall. He didn't lose the, the fear game with Inspired doing that gank. Honestly, Ooh, nice little flash work. play. Nice little lollipop hook there as well. Masu's in some trouble. Busio's going down first. First blood goes over. The biggest thing that Masu and Busio did not want to have happen is early death in the bot lane, and here we are. And this is partially because Inspired showed for that gank mid lane, but more so it was just really clean execution there by Huhi and Contracts. Leeson hasn't been a huge part of the meta, so I think a lot of times people disrespect his ability to gank as Jensen gets fairly chunked out. I, I've got to say, I feel like it's it's a pretty big mistake from FlyQuest bot lane to actually be dying there. They have basically full info of where contracts could be. Mm -hmm. Inspired crosses, so they Inspired type st starts top quadrant. They know that contracts is starting in his blues buff quadrant. Yep. They know that Inspired crosses through mid and goes to his bot side quadrant. There's nowhere yeah. else he could be except there. Like, there's literally no else on the map. He can't cross back and do the enemy blue. Otherwise, they would spot him. So I just think it's like, it's the only place he can make a play. It works. So they kind of get bailed out. But FlyQuest's level one plan and their early yeah. game plan, I think, was so good. And it was really thrown away by a bad death from Busio and, and Masu in the bot lane. Yeah, and it looks like they even had a ward in that tribe rush as that gank was happening. So part of it is... I really do want to see it again to see how much they saw versus how much the hook landed and then Lee Sin came out of fog in terms of the execution. But losing both summoners, having the ward, and then also giving up first blood is a big blunder. Yeah, it definitely is. Cleanse also we saw there burned by FBI. Definitely something to return to though. But that's where I want to focus in a little bit more on what this mid game can look like as we come to at least contrast coming down on the bottom side because Busio and Masu need to be ahead with the Kalista combo. And uh, right now they're being pushed in. 
Yeah. As, uh, ooh. Ooh, Jensen, Jensen. Jensen don't want to get solo killed by the genius mid laner in Palafox. I mean, I think across the board, FlyQuest do need this early game to be fairly successful because you don't look at an individual champion and say, wow, when this game hits 30 minutes, we're going to be useful. So the fact that they're already down zero to one and the fact that Jensen's taking some pretty negative trades, even though he's keeping his CS yeah. up okay, is not the best start for FlyQuest. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially given how good their level one was. Is Blip was oh, a lot Blip of trouble. Oh, he's dead. Solo ball over B! Man, I have got to say, FlyQuest side lanes have completely thrown away what was such a good level one play. Like, yep. look at how screwed Contrax is. Contrax is so far behind in the pace of the jungle. He's down multiple camps and going to be all these all these grubs going over to Inspired. All they had to do was just play safe, basically just chill, not really interact. And mm -hmm. Inspired would have had this massive advantage over the enemy jungler. They get way too spicy there. He's scrapping against the Rumble, who has the Ignite. You never want to take that fight. He pays for it. The bot side dies. Contracts is going to be able to get Dragon and get back into this. Uh, that is really tough. We'll see if they can punish Dokla here, though, as he comes back to lane. I mean, Inspired, I think, would have been seen by that wave. So yeah. Dokla's going to know exactly what's up. They want to try to cut him off. He has Equalizer, so he, he could Equalize the wave, the wave but, like, but then you can't walk back to the tower. So it's actually really kind of difficult Oh, here. God, it's so difficult. They are getting the Dragon on the other side of the map, so they'll have that first Infernal Dragon. Feels like a pretty decent boon there, but... Trying to figure out how to dissect this top lane is going to be difficult for NRG. Yeah, well, currently Palafox is going to move up, and the fact that he's missing from mid is going to allow Dokla to walk up, plus it saves his equalizer. So I think a quality play by FlyQuest given the circumstances, but I want to go back to what Azale was mentioning with the side lanes. There are two lanes that were organically getting push, and then both gave up individual mistake kills to their lane opponent. Those yep. are... Those are really big momentum shifters in the grand scheme of the game because what is now an even game should really be at least a 1,000 gold advantage for FlyQuest if they're playing their matchups accordingly. And now that we uh, get to it, I think this is an interesting conversation to have because I talked to Inspired, I talked to Masu. They, they felt like the first loss to ARG was a fluke. They, they, they could come in here with good decision making and not die early and find advantages. <laughs> but NRG have completely turned that on its oh. head and might do so again here. Nice little flashes back and forth. A big keeper's verdict there from Inspired. Yeah, I mean, Inspired is basically a full level ahead of where Contracts is right now. Uh, that was the advantage they got from all this great early early level planning, uh, but it just hasn't really meant too much. And Dokla now, as this uh, Equalizer is available and his Ignite's going to come back up, once the Ignite is ready, Whippo basically just can't interact in this lane yeah. at all. You know, he is really going to be on the back foot, so it's going to make things pretty tough for him. I do think that was a fairly big miss there by Palafox, though, doing the Flash Charm or rather the charm flash, and then not even burning a summoner spell from Jensen. So at least mid lane is stable currently mm -hmm. for yeah. FlyQuest, but I think overall energy should be fairly comfortable for this. I am wondering though about the bot lane pressure because we've seen so much of the Senna roaming and laning top lane or going for grubs. They haven't really been able to do that this game just because the Callista Renata pressure has been so immense. And we talked earlier about trying to get this bot lane ahead for FlyQuest at all, but now that we're getting past the level six marks, I need to see that proactivity from Jensen and Inspired specifically, and the Talia actually getting out on the map. Yeah, and we'll see if they can do it. Inspired is here. Again, he is level six, and they could look to try to set up a dive. There's no TP available from Palafox to try to answer. They really want to go for it. for it. <laughs> they, they don't know where Contracts is, is the yeah. biggest problem. I'll and definitely just... say it's a pretty shaky start to the final week of the regular season for FlyQuest. Coming into the week with sole possession of first place, losing the game yesterday, having a few miscues early today against Energy. They definitely don't want to relinquish the pressure here and give up their number one slot. This is actually a small thing, but it made such a difference. Contracts walked through lane over to Krugs instead of through the jungle to Red Buff. If he was spotted on that pink, they would have likely gone for the dive. They may yeah. still do it as they haven't seen him in a long time. They're going to look for it anyway. They are. They get the wall bang on FBI there as well. Busio sets up with the hostile takeover. Inspired's going to flash out of there. They are having a little bit of trouble taking down Huhi here. He got a lot of Ren stacked, but it's not going to be enough fun. Finally, it goes down. What would be Godzilla finally killed in FlyQuest on the board? They're still sticking to their original game plan as the fight happens top Revenge. lane as well. That's a big old crock as uh, Bwipo just taking that trade in Dokla. Nicely done by, uh, by Bwipo there. Gets the equalizer, gets the ignite. It is contracts behind him. I think he just very briefly may have gotten vision 
of the fact that Lee Sin was in the area, but it's going to play it safe because a rumble walking at you at 10% HP can only mean one <laughs> yeah. thing. It's not just the rumble there, uh, but the votes are in 65% of people thinking energy would win. In wow. This fight. All right. I'm not going to say I was a good yeah. salesman for Dokla having muscles, but you know. Well, I, th I think the fact that Think Card is the one who asked the question means he liked their chances. Uh, yeah. You're not just going to walk up and ask if you're going to beat Mike Tyson in a fight. <laughs> Bias-based analysis. I like it. Uh, Bwipo has found himself in an alcove gameplay situation. Dokla is still trying to take him out. The Inspired is here with the Keeper's Verdict. I don't think he's going to be able to get it going for him. And unfortunately, Bwipo will fall yet again. Inspired gets charmed, throws up the Teemo thumbs up, thumbs up back and forth. But FlyQuest falling down early in topside. Yeah, nice roam here from a lot of the energy members. They're going to turn this into a grub take as well, very likely. Mm -hmm. They not only get the kill, they're going to get at least one plate. They're likely going to take grubs. They're actually looking for a reinvade, though, instead here on Inspired, who has no flash. Just trying to keep the tempo up on Inspired. Uh, they'll actually be able to do so and steal away this blue buff. TP does come back towards top side of the map from Jensen. Don't think there's going to be any contest up here, though. Yeah, the level advantage is also gone completely. Contracts a level up on Inspired as they go for grub. Grubs. This is actually so interesting. So it's a Knight's Vow rush here for Inspired. He linked with the Renekton. So really feeling like it's going to be a lot of scrapping around that top side. Rushing a support item. We'll see if it works out. Oh, who he tries his best Spider-Man impression, but can't get the wall there as Contracts and FBI trying to escort him out. FlyQuest just don't have the sticking power yet. So the Grubs were the contest, though. Yeah, Energy gets one, so they'll prevent the six Grubs. But I think Inspired should be able to walk in there and get rid of the rest oh, of Dokla, though. <laughs> He's looking to guide him out of here, though. That's a lot of Ren stuff. And Dokla, who's gonna take him out? Big Dokes again with another solo. Okay. <laughs> Very bold by Masu there going up against Rumble. It's it, it definitely feels like they haven't played against the champion recently, underestimating his damage once in the top lane by Whippo and definitely in the bottom lane there by Masu. Maybe they just had his flash timer wrong, thinking that they were going to be safe there because that Joker made that kill look quite easy. Yeah, I mean, you have got to respect Rumble, when, especially when Rumble overheats. The amount of damage that's coming yeah. out is actually crazy from this champion. He's going to equalize the wave. The cannon minion is there, which will buy them some time, but Busio inspired looking for an angle. Dokla didn't leave. He's probably yeah. dead. He's got no flash. He does not have the speed up here, and Dokla gets taken out and it's by Bwipo gets the shutdown. Yeah, big shutdown there. Dokla, I think, feeling himself being 3-0 in this game. A little bit greed. 600 gold is a lot to give back over to the Renekton, who they really did have in a bad position. The Poppy Renekton, I don't think we're going to be able to win any 2v2s against the Rumble Lee Sin. That'll change a bit with that 600 gold shutdown. Yeah, definitely a mistake there. Some sloppy deaths throughout this game thus yeah. far. Uh, but energy in a slight advantage at the end of the day. And those first item completions are starting to come through. We can see Landry's obviously already done for Dokla, uh, but now we have the Malignants done there for Palafox. So we're going to be having a lot of ultis available here. Going to be constantly looking for that playmaking. He's also playing Ultimate Hunter. Of course, he doesn't have any kills or assists yet, so he doesn't have any <laughs> stacks on that. But if they can get some skirmishes going, this cooldown can get ridiculously low for the REL to the point where it just feels really, really tough to play around. And that combination of the Ari with contracts on the Lee Sin, I think is super important as we get to this mid game for them because kind of matching Inspired's proactivity with Jensen is going to be super important. And I think Energy needs to go for this Dragon right now as they're already set up for it. They have the Leandries. Dokla was just fogging. I'm a little surprised they're going back for one more mid wave uh, because they have the items at the moment to take the Drake, but I think they want to make sure they're in the right position here. And if Rumble is going to keep fogging down, he's going to lose a lot of pressure in the top lane. Energy should be stronger in a 4v4, though. I love these mind games being played by Inspired and Contract. Meanwhile, mind dive. games top side. They are completely diving Dokla. They don't get him. The last rock thrown by Jensen will end up securing the kill. Dragon started up by NRG. I do really like that play by FlyQuest, though. They decided that the Drake wasn't a priority, but they didn't completely tip their hand. They did try and stay around mid lane to make it seem like they wanted to contest it. And that's a good call by Jensen and Whippo to say, it's just the second Drake. We're a little behind in the game. We don't have the item power spikes. Let's just get gold. Go for the flashless rumble in the top lane. Not only do they get the kill, they can get a lot of turret plates too. Oh, Masu just gets fully locked down <gasps> as he gets the flash from Ahuhi. That anchor will take his life. An anchor to the back of the head there from Ahuhi as Masu goes down again has not been having the early game he would have wanted on this Kalista. And now Palafox pushing up here with that death in mid lane. It's going to be the rotation down from the rest of the energy members. They want to try to threaten. 
And I think that's interesting to think about a little bit more so because of the veterancy on the top side of the map for FlyQuest and, and playing around maybe some of the deficits that have happened in the past in bot mm. side. They still do have a lot of experience under their belt and finding ways to struggle their way out of things. Yeah, absolutely. Another potential trap here by FlyQuest, though. And they actually catch out his battle fox here. He's going to burn his flash as well as the spirit charges. To speak about, you know, one of those veterans on FlyQuest, it's Inspire, right? This guy has won MVP in LCS, in LEC, and this is actually comparing how he is doing this split on the right to how he did last time he won the MVP in the LCS. Wow. And he is having another really good split. This guy has been performing, has been such a strong jungler in his time on the LCS, both with EG and now with FlyQuest as well. Yeah, just a year between those two photos as well. New haircut. <laughs> a little bit <laughs> of difference there, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, did you see him on pros, the fit of his jersey? He's got he's got some pipes on him, too. That's what like, I'm saying. He's People are underestimating FlyQuest <laughs> and the fist fight. Yeah. Let's get back to the important things here, Jack. Yeah, we well, got to talk about the fist fight. Listen, we're going to wrap this all together. We need more fist fight stats. On pros, where he was showing off his biceps, <laughs> he did talk about Masu and Busio, and I think that applies to this game, how they've had a... They had that one game where they were killing the C9 bot lane over and over again. It seemed really amazing. That was the week Busio won Player of the Week. But Inspired was saying there's definitely a lot of games where they're not quite synced. Like they yeah. play aggressive when they shouldn't, and they play passive when they should be playing aggressive. And that can lead to a decrease in confidence over time. Yeah. What's happening in this game for me with Masu and Busio, they're they're just a little helter-skelter, right? They had mm -hmm. clearly the ability to outplay FBI and Huhi 2v2 early. They die to that first gank. Then Masu tries to get it back. He overcommits on a Dokla. Then he gets caught in mid lane again. So it's going to be, I really want to see who Masu reacts to this because he is a little down and out through to his own mistakes this game, and he needs to bounce back if they want to win. Absolutely. I will say, you know, if there's anything I would like to see from a rookie, I'd rather they're erring on the side of aggression and then just kind of tempering as they mm -hmm. learn and they get that more experience because these are some very young players uh, these are two most valuable prospect players from the nacl you know coming up into the lcs playing together and this is obviously you know that first big split for masu busio here in his, his second year um, but you know they need that time to grow and i think you want them to be aggressive you want them to play with confidence because they're two players who said they really wanted to play aggressive they really wanted to go at people that's what they were trying to accomplish in scrims so we'll see if they can kind of polish that up and get it to a point where they can consistently do it on the LCS stage. And in ACL, uh, Masu was known for his aggressive plays, his flashes for it, even when he was playing on Wi-Fi and on an awful ping. So I think getting back to that confidence is something he's personally been working on this split. And I think it, when I was talking to him, the quickness of decision makings in the mm. LCS has been really hard for him to go through. Exactly. That's something that a lot of people will tell you is that you know when they go up into the LCS, it is very different. You start to realize that there are levels to these things. These mm -hmm. players are going to punish moves that you didn't even know were mistakes and you have to adjust over time with that playstyle. we do get tower in the top side finally taken it'll be two for one at least in terms of those objectives but uh getting back to it we do have refocusing to the bottom side of the map about a minute and ten for another dragon will be a sole point for nrg yeah i think it's a big thing that nrg is going to want to set up for although I'd say they, weirdly enough, don't need to be in a rush. There's a decent power spike for FlyQuest right now with the amount of magic resist they've been able to build, like the early Hex Drinker there for the Renekton. Since when you really look at Energy's team composition, the Rumble and the Ari are a large part of it, but the Senna and Lee Sin damage aren't a huge amount of physical damage burst, especially at this stage in the game. So there's decent itemization now with the lockup being completed as well by Busio's Renata. If there's a fight that Energy wouldn't want to rush into, I think it would be this next Drake. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of upfront damage. We have to be able to execute on that, mm -hmm. get that kill early on, or it can start to peter off. Uh, something else I know you wanted to kind of dive into, Jet, uh, was not just the comparison between his MVP split, but You're inspired right. this split versus last split. Right, because people forget about the splits in the middle, right? So last split, actually, he didn't lose a single game. <laughs> and he got a tattoo. But here's what we're going to Oh, hit. man. Yeah, Whippo's just caught in the middle of the conversation, maybe lost in it a little bit. Now NRG are streaming forward as FlyQuest pull away with the Fates call. And that's a huge pick there by Energy. One second until the Drake spawns here. Whippo would be able to teleport back. Energy not actually starting on spawn instead, just going for gold. He's, Don't oh, hit the wall. Oh, okay. I thought what? he was going to hit the wall for sure. <laughs> uh, FBI's got the driver's license today, apparently. They 
don't seem to be going for that second charge. Might try to escort it in. Yeah, gonna walk it up. It should get that second charge. Uh, we'll get that chip damage down. Gives them Pryo as well. Obviously, Whippo was already dead. They're over. They're onto the dragon, but... FlyQuest could contest this with the teleport. They'd that still was a have bizarre their TP. Yeah, Jensen's a little far back. He does have the Weaver's Wall available if they want to cut something off. Nice charm on Amasu. He's gonna have to bear that cleanse immediately. Now, NRG should have the right of way to this dragon, but Jensen wants to cut off the rest of the team here. Who he's getting Ooh, chunky he gets blocked back too, but that is big. He's still alive, gets bailed out as well. FlyQuest take one, and now they move on to the dragon, but it's already gone from contracts and NRG. Yeah, nice equalizer there from Dokla. Does push them back. They lose Who he, but they get the dragon. They move to Soul Point, which is going to be very big here for the team. So a pretty good trade. There's nothing else FlyQuest is really even in position to get off of that. There's no minions mid, so it's not like they can trade for that. The tier one is already down top and bot. So it's just the one kill for the dragon. I think energy will be happy about setting themselves up for that potential soul. I think energy is in a very good state right now for winning this game against FlyQuest. It's really interesting to think that for everything, all, all the downs that Energy's had the splits, Palafox is playing fairly aggressive with Zalt. Oh. They, only a game away from FlyQuest with a win. So much oh my action, God. though. Wow. What? They're giving me a little taste of the LPL here as we get a shutdown going over to Masu in the mid lane because they took down Palafox. Contracts was gone on the bot side. They can't get FBI. Ooh. He's skating them around here. And he's got those shots. He wants one more. The flash from Busio, but who he with another one. And that anchor's coming for them all. Wow, what a sequence there. It looked like Energy was just going to lose everything around the map, and they would have. They still lost mid-jungle, but FBI and Huhi clutch up at the very end to at least trade one back. And getting them so low actually buys time for Dokla to potentially push up. You know, maybe he can get something down on this bot side. Doesn't have to be careful about Bwipo, but that bot tier one is very low. So that's some gold on the map they could look for. Nicely done there by FBI, chunking them out, trading back, getting a little bit something going there for the team. Yeah, and just looking at the overall game state right now, it's super interesting because I, I feel like energy is definitely going to be stronger in 5v5s. We're seeing that around Drake. When they set up, they're able to take it down. But Bwipo, even at 1-3, and three, can threaten the Rumble. And then Jensen's having a really solid game picking up kills in the side lane. Watching this whole sequence one more time, this was some... Early trading in nice the mid lane. Shake. Yeah. It was just a little bit aggressive there from Palafox. He wanted to use the last charge for that little bit more chip damage on Amasu, but Busio catches him with there the handshake, go. and that's what prompts the engage. They know that he doesn't have any more ulti charges to get out, so they try to pile in. They think they can finish off FBI, but this is where it's some nice play there from FBI. Is more they're going to go again? <laughs> we just can't Bye. stop fighting. Palafox is down to a killing spree for Masu, and I'd say it's a nice little comeback. I mean, this is a sequence of the game where FlyQuest are go, Baron. being very aggressive and being the initiators. They fight in the mid lane, they fight in the bot, the bot lane. During our replay, they fight again in the mid lane. They should very well try and force Baron, or at least play that way, so energy has to check. Yeah, I thought they were going to try to at least force the, the TP from who he started yeah. off, get that out, but instead yeah. they are electing to actually just walk down and try to answer. Stop Can and stop it? He yep. does. Does indeed. Uh, should we get the little uh, movement there from uh, who he making his way out of there? But I think... This is what speaks to some of that veterancy. Keeping your head in the game for FlyQuest, even though things were going so badly. I mean, they do have a really good setup here for the Talia, obviously, you know, with the Renekton stun point and click into the Seismic Shove. That is one target almost always just going to getting bursted down. And they also have great denial of engage with the Poppy as well as the Renata. You know, Energy can win these fights if they really make advantage of that initial engage. They get a great equalizer. They have to set up for that. But if you all funnel into one choke, all of a sudden you're walking into the Talia Rocks. You're walking into the hostile takeover here from Busio, and the game is going to get flipped on its head. And we are uh, hitting those two, almost three item spikes. At least the Gwinsu's was completed for Masu, mm -hmm. waiting for that second one for FBI, but obviously a little bit back end of that one since he isn't farming as much. And that is where that kind of spike maybe plays into the hand of FlyQuest a little bit more. Those combinations may be easier to succinct together. Absolutely. And Masu, who we've talked a lot about this game, has bounced back. Yeah. Three kills now on the Callista. Really a huge threat in these team fights, as well as contesting the midway very aggressively against the Senna. That's going to be harder and harder as the Senna gets more souls because the range is going to increase. But Masu with the early adversity and then Jensen not being on his Orianna or his ear, actually having a pretty big game here on Chalio when the Karma yesterday was not it. And a personal note for Masu was trying to not view bot lane in a vacuum and mm. trying to make sure that he could actually have say on the map after getting out of laning phase. And this is a nice little 
example of one of those situations. I'm going to be interested to see if they're going to start putting more gold in the pockets of FBI and start donating some more farm yeah. over onto him to try yeah. to accelerate him a little bit here. Uh, he obviously has been picking up a little bit of farm, um, but you want to try to give you know as much gold as you can to this guy at this point in the game because he really does have to be one of those bigger threats. Uh, he is picking up quite a few souls, 93 so far, doing much better than Berserker did last game where he was he was down at like 60 or something like that around this point in the game, maybe even lower. Um, so it was really tricky to pick them up. And this is something that I think FBI is very comfortable on. Yes. This is one of his most played. He's played it five times. You know, Renekton. Oh, right. Blippo just gets completely caught wanting, though. He's Everything's high. used to save him now. Equalizer back, but it ain't going to equalize anything because Masu goes on a rampage. It just feels like Palfox has not been able to hit a charm on anyone. He keeps fishing, but they don't really have the lockdown besides who he. There's no point in click CC really for him to guarantee that charm. And they're just being able to avoid it. They commit in onto Bwipo. They think they can get the kill, but it gets turned around and contracts gets burst down. I mean, the fact that that play from Bwipo is what denied the soul, that's a little bit ludicrous. Like he just, True. he just blind walked into what felt like the entire energy team lives to tell the tale. They kill the jungler on the way out. And there we go. So calculated one fight or not calculated? <laughs> you tell us, chat. What do you think? Oh, goodness. I think we're going to get that 50-50 like again. I would like to say he was seeing the whole game. He had a vision. That's why he built the Mercury Treads and the Hex Drinker. But what? That sounds How about Whippo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, it's, it's been working pretty well for him. He ends up being pretty tanky. The rest of the team kind of piling in there to save him. And they don't have the burst damage to actually knock him down. So it makes it tough. FlyQuest yep. now yep. in a very good spot. Energy definitely were counting on being able to get that soul as a major win condition here. And now FlyQuest has bought themselves at the very least a lot more time to continue scaling up. Can we tell who the Knight's Vow is on? Did he move it to the center or is it still, it's still on the Renekton? Uh, yeah, it is. I, I can see it now. Inspired and Whippo are still paired up. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, tried and Traduo now, apparently. Baron already started about halfway. Calista can red. Contracts is on his way here. Equalizer goes down. Can Contracts get the 50-50? He cannot. Inspired cleans it up. And now who he is overextended himself, but Pal Fox wants to go in too. And RG are stepping forward. They want an engage, but Blippo, he pulls the trigger first, and FlyQuest are running down in RG. Dokla's getting his health ripped from his life, but I think who he wants a little bit of a fight. They might have heard that fist fight allegation and want more, but FlyQuest answer in kind with a haymaker. FlyQuest just playing with so much more confidence and decisiveness. They just start the Baron, they're willing to flip it with the Ren Smite, they get it. They're re-engaging all these fights. They're really showing that right now, Energy doesn't have enough physical damage to kill them. They have a lot of MR on the Renekton. He's able to play like a Giga Tank, and really, FlyQuest have completely turned the game over. Yeah, they're doing a really good job denying a lot of these engages as well from Energy as they pile in. They're not having enough damage to actually burst someone down. As you said, now a Maw is going to be completed. We can see, you know, it's not only the Knight's Valve that's helping keep Bubble alive, also an Abyssal Rush there from Inspired. We can watch this one more time. As they do go in, Inspired gets relatively low. The locket gets used. Energy want to look for the fight, but the flash forward, the stun, and the insta-kill on Palafox, who has just been having so much difficulty getting yeah. involved this game. But I also think, as the fight concludes, the side laning of FlyQuest, even though it's hard to track in individual moments, has been hugely successful. There is a three-level gap between Renekton and Rumble. Yeah. There is a two-level gap between Talia and Ari. So five cumulative levels across solo lanes because they're constantly able to push sides. The Talia is threatening, the Poppy's looming, and it allowed them to have the advantage for that fight. Yeah, and I think one of the problems there for energy is they're feeling the pressure. I think they're feeling like, hey, we need to get something done early. So that's forcing them to group, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. ending up putting them further and further behind. FlyQuest isn't allowing themselves to get caught out. When they fish, they're not really finding those kills. So then you just slowly fall further and further behind and it builds up these big leads. And I'm just sitting here watching Bwipo take multiple engages by himself to set up the yeah. team a lot of these times. And it's that decision making that's making the difference. He has six levels on FBI. Jesus. He's a big crocodile. One of those Florida Is that enough to make like the full boots or is it too much to handle? <laughs> the croc is a big one here. I think when Bwipo has had, a, I feel like a resurgence in his own branding, but also his play this year. It's been really impressive to watch. A kind of meta trender 
here in the LCS. Also, speaking of trending, you got the Weaver's Wall in to block off the turret. The wall bang there from Inspired under Tower on a Huhi. NRG are trying wow. to fight back, but they lose one. The Crypt Bloom's starting to come in clutch here. Inspired will fall too. So it's a one for one, but FlyQuest continue the siege with the Baron buff. Yeah, really interesting sequence there. They can burst down Huhi so quickly. But Inspired gets a little too aggressive. It shouldn't really matter, though, since Whippo can still just press yeah. R, be this 4,000 health threat, and they can pretty easily clear that in Hib and then reset for Drake. Exactly, and, and Energy's comp is so ulti-reliant. When there's no Equalizer, mm -hmm. there's no re -ult. Sure, they have a lot of people alive, but what are you going to do? Who's going to kill Whippo in that situation? No one has a yeah. chance to do so. You know, it's so much about that upfront damage, about being able to eliminate someone, but it never feels like they've been able to get onto Jensen. He's the easiest target to really try to kill if you can get on him, but they haven't been able to do it. Also later today, Courage gonna come in to see if the curse continues. He has never cast 100 Thieves to win a game. He, I think he was looking to get the schedule as well and be like, oh yeah, sure, we can beat Shopify. Let me have that one. Uh, I see, I we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. There's been a- Shopify beat energy an yesterday. Oh, they did. Immortals beat Cloud9 today. Exactly. They did. Hey, but that's that's trending though, because they already beat These them in the first round, Robert. Come on. <laughs> Apparently we're just devolving into a point where every team is fist fighting every team. We're figuring out who can win those, I guess. But uh, FlyQuest sure. fist fighting pretty handily here in game two of the day and it looks like they'll be able to take another dragon here too okay how does energy come back because right now it looks like FlyQuest has a 80 85 percent chance to me fbi would need to get to at least 140 souls because then he can maybe win like an eye contact poke and like stop FlyQuest from <laughs> a very specific. That's amount of very souls. specific. Well, That's what I was like. It's, say. it's Checking weird. the wind going on in the studio. You're like, oh well, the wind's coming this in is from the sound, north. This so is gonna sound weird, but just about like 140, you'll do it. Back in the day, I watched a lot of scrims against FBI when Sen was meta, and when he got to 140 souls, <laughs> they just win. It's, there was <laughs> this something is so about, arbitrary. There was it something is. about that range boost that made it so he'd get mid another 120 mid won't do it. No, nope, once we get enough. to like 75 nope. minutes in the game nope, and whatever 40. <laughs> and that's but also now that Masu has a GA and it's it's looking kind of over Renekton will just flash on a Senna also, regardless. I, I feel like you could give Senna 200 souls right now and they would still lose. I right. wish we had like the ability to do that. We're not going down that. Because, because <laughs> it's, it's like giving he, he's got two people. items. Yeah. He just doesn't do any damage, right? Like the souls yeah. are going to help. You can you can poke and you can prod, but um, the problem is they don't seem to have the sustained damage. They haven't been able to find the angles on the upfront burst. They were counting on this Ari Lee Sin to be this kind of skirmish force that are finding angles and finding picks mm -hmm. and being able to make things happen. It has amounted to basically nothing the entire game. Yep. And that is really the struggle here is they have to have that perfect engage. It's basically got to be on Jensen. But and even then, if it's all single target damage, they get bailed out. If they can get that one kill, uh. turn it around, it means nothing. It's so yeah. tough to answer into what FlyQuest have. And I return to the conversation that we were having where it's like last time around, the, the big focus was FlyQuest fell down early and they were never able to really get back in the game. They fell down early in this game, but it is a difference, I feel like, that we've seen the growth of this yeah. split that shows that they can just power through it. And it's it's also, you know, compositional, right? I think it's a strong draft. When you get mm. into late stages, we're talking about, ah, oh, energy, got to find this perfect engage, got to be able to find these angles. Well, Poppy is there to deny that. Busio is there to deny that on the Renata, and so is Jensen, you know, with the, the unworked ground. So it's really difficult for energy to find anything. Like, how do you walk in here? Yeah, it's very difficult. You see they're trying to pick through the mask here to find a way in just, if they go for it if dokla just can get a big oh, equalizer at least there it is contract in the pit contract's gonna get the baron oh. too oh. and contracto as now Blipo goes ham though over on to who he trading that kill back for the baron ah we've seen this happen so many times that the, the Callista rend is such a bait sometimes it because really the players is. really don't know exactly how much damage it's gonna deal and they try to combine that with the smite. It does not work. Contracts gets the kill. They get the Baron. That buys energy some time. We'll see if that's enough to get them back into it. Maybe if they can get soul now. There and maybe could if be they an can angle. get to 140, 140 souls, stacks, already, it already works. 13 more, <laughs> and then they win the game. This I, is easy. I gotta say, that's the second ridiculous Baron steal Contracts has had in as many weeks. He had yep, one yeah. in their comeback against the Immortals game as well. well right? yep. And I think if oh FBI, what this is very dangerous. He's, He's got to get those 13 stacks. Oh, he gets the flat oh, wall no. bang from Inspired. It gets completely outplayed. Jensen is unstoppable. That's a big mistake there. I don't think it's going to matter that much. They should still be able to hold 
their nexus from this, but they'll probably lose an inhibitor in a 5v4 here. And that means inhibs on top and bottom That's gone. Tough. Super minions across the side lanes in a team comp that feels really good to kind of pick apart the map. Energy are struggling to find a defensive answer. But so what I find interesting about this is like, I want to credit FlyQuest with their ability to pilot their draft. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of teams could play Renekton Talia and think that it falls off a cliff after say 15 minutes. Like if you haven't won from early Renekton dives, you're done for. But they accrued such large advantages in setup before the fights that they allowed the fights to be successful. Watching this one more time, Palafox actually lands a charm here. It really throws a lot of chaos into FlyQuest because they can nearly take Masu out of the fight. It allows contracts to just kind of fly into nice the pick. Kick. 500 health there on wow. the Baron by the time he smites it. Yeah, he steps in, gets the kick on Inspired. Inspired was trying to channel up the Poppy Copter and knock him out. Now they maybe found another Ooh. pick. Their G were the ones that started that one off, and they're looking okay. to finish it too. Nice little double knock up from Inspired. But here comes FlyQuest on the front to back. Flipo's you in. gotta be really careful. Jensen's full health now. Flipo's healing up a storm. They've already got one. Give a double kill to Matsu. They want more. Matsu stepping forward. He's gonna get burned down though himself as Palafox claims the shutdown. Such a close fight there. They could not quite finish off the first kill on Inspired, which will now just allow FlyQuest to continue to try and pile in two for one so far. Yeah, and they actually TP top there. So they're looking for a potential flank angle here. You know, Bwipo could try to threaten to walk in behind. They want to try to take that mid lane inhibitor, maybe be able to threaten them, but they don't have a minion wave until this next one comes in. I just love it. Whippo is giving his body to the team, it feels like, in these fights, consistently being that frontline engage. And they will finally take an inhibit. Won't be all three at the same time, but definitely some lasting damage to NRG's base. And now they can go right back towards this dragon here. Masu not up for a while. Who he's going to be up faster and with a TP. And contracts are spawning now, but there's going to be supers coming in the top lane. They're going to TP deep. They're going to look for a flank. Yeah. Try to get the soul and try to go for a Hail Mary. But I think FlyQuest is going to try and go for the base, actually, because they have teleport oh, on he's gonna get who he... They're going to try and split them up, whereas Energy is actually the ones that want to go for the Drake. Oh, this is kind of decent. Like wants to end. Yeah. Whippo and Jensen are just going to try to go They're for the TPing. end. Yeah, Jensen's in there like Swimwear, baby, and they have an open Nexus turret waiting for them. Oh, Energy take down Busio, but here comes FlyQuest. They want to make sure they make revenge for losing that first round Robin against NRG, and it's at the hands of Whippo and Jensen. They're trying to take down the last tower here. I don't think they can do it. Douglas oh. still there. Douglas burning him to a crisp. A thousand gold shut down and give another 600 to Palafox. It's total chaos. Who he's trying to delay Masu and Inspired. They're going for the Drake. Inspires here. I think Contract Contract is coming, coming back. My oh my God. This is absolutely insane. Look at all those Ren Wait. stacks. The Keeper's he running. It hits him. And the Dragon will be secured by Masu. Oh my God. This game is insanity, man. FlyQuest tried to go for the game ender. They probably could have just won the fight at the Dragon. But they end up trying to go for it. Palafox ulted and flashed over the wall to try to get out of there. And now he's Yo. looking for the chase down oh, here. Man. He still has the charm. He is so angry and inspired here. And it fits the charm on the Krug. What? Palafox ends up getting the kill in the end. But the Krug's tried to save FlyQuest's life. That Krug is a paid actor. There is no <laughs> way. Ran straight down into the wave. Protect the president. He's diving in front of Inspired. This is some classic energy League of Legends. Yes, they are in finals form. It feels like they just make the teams fight in the dirt here They are in such a grim situation at the moment with two inhibs and the sliver of a Nexus turret but as FlyQuest was going for the end Energy was able to get the pick. I'm surprised they were so unwilling to just commit to this Drake since they had two people back in base anyway. I think if they stay on that Drake in like a 3v2, they probably have soul as well as this, but the fact that they recalled extra ended up costing them. Yeah, the really difficult part is that you don't play these situations out often. Yep. You don't really know. Like, do they for sure win this fight in the base? Do you know? No. Palafox has no alt, has no flash. Are you confident? Contracts wasn't confident, so he started walking back to base. Yep. Because if you're saying, all right, sweet, I'm going to stay on the dragon, and then you do the classic dragon for Nexus trade, well, you're going to be regretting it. So it is uh, definitely difficult there. It is indeed. And uh, now we get back on the map. It feels like both teams kind of waiting for the timer. Fly definitely want to press the tempo here and find a pick out before then. But uh, I think NRG are fine just buying their time in some ways because their team fight has really started to come online. 
it, it has I actually don't even know if FlyQuest is going to straight up fight them unless they can get a pick because the yeah. threat of anyone teleporting in the back since Whippo can murder anyone 1v1 Jack, and how his many teleports can be back in 15 <laughs> let's check, so let's he's, see. he's got enough honestly he has 145 oh, that's oh awesome. my god we've hit it I said that's one of the conditions of an energy cut. Ah, uh, see, so run it back a little yeah. bit. <laughs> one of the things that has to happen. He has eight bonus stacks. He's got stacks. Oh my spare. God, stacks! Hey, listen, for days. he's doing damage now. Look at <laughs> that. He, look he, at the range. Look at that. He actually tickled him. He Only wasn't twenty more of those. It'll kill him. <laughs> there we go. Tickle, tickle. Uh, as now we got to see FlyQuest with three dragons in a row, setting up with presence in mid lane, but. Really, again, just if he gets caught, if anybody gets caught from NRG, the game is over. Yeah, Mouse is so strong. God, he's oh doing so much damage to who he there. It's so many Ren stacks. He'll be about half health after it. Yeah, but the problem is now, who he you know does get chunked out. They're gonna try to heal him back up with the Senna. Obviously, they're looking for a kill into an objective. They want to guarantee mm -hmm. it that way. But they're also willing to go for a base race. They have multiple options. They just have yeah. to make sure they're not being too creative and trying to overforce. Whippo maybe gonna get caught out here. Oh yeah, oh. he's been a key the entire game, and they know to focus him. He goes right back in for the one v four, but it'll go oh. right down as FBI claims it. Man, he flashed it, but the charm was huge. Oh, oh distance caught too. They actually take him down. Shutdown goes to power. Fox, nice keeper's verdict. Get a couple members out for FlyQuest, and it actually means the FlyQuest want to turn back around. Face call They're used on the Dokla. They've got Ooh, a decent him. Okay. They've got the flank here from NRG, and they might just turn it all around. 40 minutes into the game. FlyQuest, they're getting dusted off the back of it. Oh, FBI has hit the stack, and he's completely blowing them up. They lost another Nexus turret there to the minions. They lost another Nexus turret, but they're pinging down towards bot, but they have no CP now because who oh, uses it? If Talifox teleports bot, they might have been able to oh get Oh my gosh. Turret. Oh my god, they're going to get Baron. Well, that they're was who used TP. So Palafox didn't have TP, I don't think, so he couldn't actually TP down towards bot. Uh, their their base should be okay. They will take Baron. This is insanity, and I just think FlyQuest are making it a little bit too complicated, yes. and energy are thriving in the chaos. There was so much going through that. When Whippo flashed back in, he was trying to do it for a big empowered Q on multiple multiple people to get that heal and buy time. But the charm from Palafox caught him as he went in. He never got the Q off. He didn't get the healing through. Now Whippo's back. Double it's DP coming fight. through. Can they win this fight? It's dead even now, but it might not be for long. Whippo takes the engage here, but Jensen, he can't find the seismic shove. GA got to be popped here. He's Whippo needs dead. to find We're a way playing. out, but he can't get it. The charm doesn't connect, but it doesn't matter. That croc's going down anyways. Palafox is unstoppable. Whippo is overforcing like crazy. It's still three members there. He oh. pops the ult, he runs in. Sure, you have the GA, but now you're dead. When the dragon's gonna be spawning, you probably just gave away soul for free, and you still have to be able to fight through the Nautilus. It's not like there's yeah. no one there to peel. And they spent their double TP there. So yeah. every inhibitor is up. They had that as a backdoor threat this entire time. Benson can still ult into the base, potentially, so I mean, they have to leave they someone. Have, they have to kill this so fast, and energy's a little slow checking. I think this could be soul. Who he's gotta go oh, right away. Oh, nice little denial they from Huhi. Yeah, that's it. it, that's it. The rend is there, and soul secured four cloud dragons in a row for FlyQuest. Man, energy was so slow to show up to that. And now they feel like they maybe need to try to force something yeah. here. Contracts is looking because they know they just gave over that soul as a freebie. Whippo is still dead for a while and has no TP, so they need more, but their minion waves aren't in the right spots. Yeah, and FlyQuest is so fast here. So I think they're going to be, even though it hasn't worked for them, I think they're going to continue to try and spread out and push these side waves. If they can sneak anyone up the side, they'll go for it. But this is a window here. Energy has five people in the mid lane. And Baron. They have minions. They have Baron. They got 170 cent of range oh at the moment. Oh, my God. So let's see what they can do. They are pushing into the base. Mid lane is uh, the siege potential here. Baron still ticking as Inspired wants to pull them off. Nice little dredge line from Huhi, but Maiba overextended himself a little bit. Dawning Shadow to save the day, and they just can't tank through the front line of NRG. A minute more of Baron. I think they got three quarters of the turret on that first wave. They should be able to finish the turret here. Inspired got pushed back, so it should be an inhibitor broken here. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna be able to step up and take this down. You know, the wave clear, not enough. It's getting really dicey here. You can see Busio trying to find an angle for a potential hostile takeover. Inspired looking for a flank around as well. He's gonna try to reject someone oh, and now they're gonna look for the fight. They want it and who he can't get the connection there. This might have been the pick that fly needed. They get the Nautilus, they get the front line and now onto the mid lane. Yeah, they're gonna look to try to push for the base. Energy trying to make something happen here while the Baron buff is still active. They only have 30 seconds remaining. Oh, they know Whippo. their Nexus is open. Nice kick from yeah. Contracts denying the engage there. Inspired gets caught by Palafox. So Inspired up. is gone. Now Dokla's gone. 
two, trading off the kills, but range is at the advantage of FBI. They've got the range, they've got the distance, but Whippo wants to close that distance. He's got it, as now a Pal Fox is just down and out. Jensen gets the shutdown, Masu's kiting, Ooh, and in FlyQuest, they're fighting tooth and nail here. FBI's gone, and FlyQuest, they've just done it. It's an absolute banger between these two teams fighting tooth and nail, but FlyQuest finally make it happen. Are you not entertained, LCS? FlyQuest versus NRG turns out to be an absolute banger. It's not going to be the longest of the split, but FlyQuest will move themselves to 9-4 and four and get revenge on NRG's first round robin. 43 kills in 44 minutes. Seven Drake secured. <laughs> Look Much at those faces. entertainment. I would say the Cloud Soul had a huge impact on that final fight, being able to chase down energy. They made that one a banger. This win guarantees FlyQuest is in the upper bracket of playoffs. So they are now guaranteed top four and still the leading candidates to be the number one seed. Really fun game there between both these teams. So FlyQuest obviously looking like they're in a really good spot for a while. I think they got a little bit too fancy, a little bit too yep. creative. Yep. I think they probably could have just taken standard fights, not taking any big risks and look to try to just close up the game that way. But it was a great steal from Contracts. Pulls the game a little bit closer back to parity. At the end of the day, though, FlyQuest are able to get it done. Energy just always seems to end up in these crazy games, though, man. It's really kind of I love it as well because something that Inspired pointed out to me coming into the game was smiles are the biggest thing he feels like has been a positivity for FlyQuest. You see a ton of smiles up there, the laughing, the camaraderie. But FlyQuest just know how to get it done. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those games that if you're FlyQuest, you're all smiling, you're laughing if you win. Yeah, it's if true. you lost that game, they wouldn't be oh, did you see that part where we were 4K ahead yeah. and then we lost the Baron? No. It would be Hilarious. Very different, a very Remember different when conversation. I was giga fed on Renekton and teleported and died? Awesome. <laughs> Uh, but FlyQuest looking really good in the regular season. They have been very dominant. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see how far they can go in playoffs. Truly will be. And now with playoffs on the horizon, we're excited to let you all, to let all you fans at home know you can cast your own votes for Kia MVP and Kia All Pro this year. That's actually huge. Head over to KiaLCSAwards.com to place your votes. Now we're gonna be joining Raz and Jensen on stage for an interview. What's up everyone and congratulations to Jensen on that victory. Thank you. What the hell was that game? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't even know how to answer that question, to be honest, because that was uh, quite a banger, yeah. Where did you feel it started to get a little more complicated in that game? I don't know if I can pinpoint a specific point. There was, there was, I don't know, this whole game is like, it was like a mess. I don't even know where to start. Like, I think we just, dude, I don't know. I think we just died a bit too much. Right? I don't know. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. I want to talk about the prep coming into this week because I got the news about, you know, Azir bug, he's out. How did that feel like it kind of hit your preparation coming into this split? Because I remember that tweet you had in the early parts of the split. If you keep getting Oriana and Azir, then you can keep getting, like, you're going to keep picking it. But yeah. suddenly Oriana's getting banned now. I mean, I felt like someone probably had it out for me because it's like the two champs I only really play. So it was a bit difficult of a week because I had to prepare a third champion. Um, it was Talia in this case, um, but I'm glad it worked out. But it was very tough news when it hit us. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad I could overcome the complications of Asir being disabled, but I'm hoping he'll be back for playoffs. <laughs> and a serious point, I want to talk about your role in the team a little bit because A, yes, you've been going to those champions just because I guess I'm assuming it's like easy scaling. You get the like least draft resources, generally the least resources in the game too, and you've been seen as like a stable point on the map. Just talk about your role in the team and how you've how you've been feeling with it. Um, yeah, I mean, usually I just pick my mid lane early in the draft, and then we kind of just build from there. These champs kind of just fit in whatever scenario, so it makes it really easy to draft if you have those champs, and uh, it's been working for us. So we've kind of just been keeping up with it, but obviously for playoffs, you know, I need to have a few more picks ready, and uh, I mean, I guess it was good I was forced off his year this week, yeah. There we go, good preparation. I would say, uh, last question for me is going to be around just all pro. We're getting into the end of the week, we're getting into the end of the split, like even in the podcast on pros, JoJo mentioned your name, I feel like a lot of mid laners have been talking about how well you, well people have been talking about how well you've been performing, just like generally make a case for yourself and how you feel about how you've been performing this split. 
This is my my own case. Yeah, this is your case. I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna like hype myself up like that. Why but not? I, okay, I mean, I'm the best. Uh, everything everyone else is like. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think, I mean, I do think I'm the best, but I think Quid and Jojo have been playing pretty well as well, but I mean, we'll, I don't know. I don't know. You Honestly, don't I don't even know how to answer this question, That's, but we'll see in playoffs. That's fair enough. And you know what? I appreciate that one. I think that's pretty much it for us. Congratulations one more time. Thank you. Next game is going to be Team Liquid versus Dignitas. As we go to break, check out the LCS Connected Comms replay presented by AT&T and voted by you by the chat and a little bit more some because of that game. Thank you, guys. It's going to be time. I need no time right now for five seconds. On me. I'm coming. Look, they're looking on Renekton. I'm cutting them. I dubbed Lee, Lee, Lee. I dubbed I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm Lee, fine. Lee, Lee, Lee's Lee's dead. Dead. I'm recalling and I can TP back, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. Can so we down. start can dash? Let's just get no, 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 get so, get so, get so. I dubbed you at 12. I'll jump over the wall, okay? Yeah, yeah. Start it, start it. Look, 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 look. Look, Narrows, look, Narrows. Yeah, maybe we can end mid now. Holy, you're a spider, down mid. Run down mid. Yeah, I think we just try mid. It's slowly. So they have to catch us. No charm. We don't need a wave, by the way. Yeah, uh, we, we don't need, need a wave. No flash on Lee. He flash kicked me. He flash kicked me. Oh, he can we look me? Rumble? Can, can we look Rumble? Can we look Rumble? Look Rumble, look Rumble. Uh, We're fighting Rumble here at this side. Rumble's okay, dead. Rumble's dead. Ari, Ari is coming. We can run to their base, run to their base. Run to base, yeah, yeah. I have stopwatch if he goes. Talia has flash too. I'm ulting. I'm, okay, I'm stunning this guy, I'm stunning this guy. Ari's dead here, okay? Cause Ari together, Ari together, Ari together. Nice guys. Uh, we can go mid and end, we can go mid and end. Okay, reach, uh, reach, reach this guy. Yeah, reach Sena. Kill this guy and end mid. Go, go mid, go mid. Don't, don't focus wave, just run, just run. Wave. I'm just gonna kill this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can kill him. You can run, you can end it. Straight, oh, straight. Bye -bye. <laughs> Oh, the game, the game, Poppy King. Holy, that Poppy Builders. That Poppy Builders. We made it a banger. Like, we made it a banger. Holy, that Poppy is kind of insane. Nice. Well played, bro. Holy. I don't know. I got a bit dizzy. Look what I just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <laughs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste.